Hey everybody, it's John at Life Size here again for another interview in our leadership series. And today I am meeting with a very special guest, Christian Palmez from the Palmez Vineyards. Christian, how are you doing today? Thanks, John. Thanks for having me. We're excited to be here. Well, we appreciate it. I have to start by asking you about the incredible scene behind you. That is about <laughs> the most stunning room that I think I've seen in at least recent memory. What can you tell me about it? So this is one of the rooms uh, inside the winery, and uh, we have we have actually two uh, dedicated life-size rooms uh, that serve a lot of functions, uh, from you know hosting customers to uh, doing internal tastings as well. Wow, that's great! And uh, I skipped over this part, but where is the winery located? So the winery is uh, located on the. Uh, eastern side of Napa Valley. So you, know, you think about Napa Valley uh, as obviously two mountain ranges, uh, you know, flanking the, the valley of Napa with the city and Yonville and, and uh, you know, all the way up to Calistoga. We are kind of parallel with Napa the city on one of the taller mountains called Mount George. Our property goes up and over Mount George. So I'm sure you're a very busy person. We have talked to a couple other leaders recently who have told us that their schedules have fundamentally changed over the past several weeks for obvious reasons. So tell me a little bit about what a day in the life looks like for you right now. Well, you know, really right now, it's, it's just been a change uh, switching from uh, you know, a winery focused on, on obviously production and, and the viticultural, uh, you know, parts of managing our vineyards uh, with the addition of, of all our hospitality, right? So our, our, our incredible marketing team taking care of our guests who come from all over the world to visit us. And obviously with uh, the, the recent changes, um, we have now transitioned to an essential only team who's running operations at the winery. Obviously, we, the family, are still here um, because we live on the property. Uh, and, and obviously, we cannot have any visitation from the, from the public. So it's, uh, it's been quite, quite the adjustment for, for, the, for the entire wine industry. Yeah, that is a big change in a short period of time. Um, before all of this, um, you know, the health, global health crisis, you know, shelter in place and stay at home orders from local and state governments, um, tell us a little bit about what a normal day at Palmas Vineyards would have looked like perhaps six months ago. Um, and, and also just share a little bit of history on uh, the business and, and your family and, and what inspired uh, Palmas Vineyards. What was, what was the story behind what we're seeing here in front of us today? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, our, our family's originally from Argentina. Uh, we moved to the United States really for my father, uh, his medical career. Uh, brought us here. He was the, the inventor of the balloon expandable stent. And while he was doing his residency at UC Davis, uh, my parents fell in love with uh, the wine industry. This was in the uh, you know late 70s, early 80s. And uh, after his his medical career uh, uh, was successful, uh, we basically uh, made the decision. My parents made the decision that. That they would dedicate their lives to, to the art of making wine, and we were fortunate enough to acquire uh, th this property, which was a historic property uh, in the Napa Valley, and uh, and we founded what is now Palmas Vineyards in uh, in December of 1996, and uh, essentially began replanting the vineyards. Uh, the property is about 640 acres. It goes up and over uh, Mount George, as I mentioned. We have 64 acres planted uh, with all five Bordeaux, three whites, and a little bit of Grenache, and uh, essentially began construction on the winery, which is a pretty unique facility, fully underground, 100% gravity flow structure, and uh, you know began uh, building our brand. And uh, to answer your question about what we would have been doing had this uh, issue not occurred. Uh, the winery would be, you know, full of, of uh, by appointment, uh, you know, customers uh, going on, on, on extensive fun tours of the facility and sitting down with their ambassadors to conduct uh, a very high-end tasting. Yeah, well, let's get into that a little bit. Um, 
for one, this is a, a beautiful time of year in the Bay Area, having been in Napa several times myself. I know uh, it's a stunning place to be. It's, it's a vibrant part of the tourism industry uh, in the West Coast. Uh, and you've built this incredible destination that unfortunately the, the general public's unable to visit right now. So what that brings us to is the core of conversation today. Um, how has that impacted your, your team and, and you personally right now? What have you done since um, it became apparent that uh, normal operations were going to be interrupted or suspended for a period of time? Well, as I mentioned, the, the marketing team, um, uh, since we are essential uh, team members only here at the winery, which really includes the winemaking team and the viticultural team, um, those in charge of production, the the ambassadors and, and their support staff are basically all at home, working from home. And what we've been able to do is, you know, since since a, a great port, a majority of our of our business comes from direct to consumer relationships, uh, where the customer essentially is traveling to us for uh, uh, to, to visit us, we have essentially. Uh, transitioned our, our communications to essentially bring the brand to them. And as you can imagine, you know, people are at home, uh, perhaps uh, enjoying wines more than ever. <laughs> and so these products are still very near and dear to, uh, to, our, to, our, to our customers. Um, we've just needed to become a little more innovative in how we uh, maintain that, that, that connection. All right, well, that brings us to the start of the show. I have to ask you about a fairly recent new marketing initiative that you're calling the Wine Stream. So Christian, what is the story behind the Wine Stream? Who gets credit for it? And when did you know <laughs> that this was gonna be something that was gonna allow you to stay in uh, contact with your customer base? Yeah, well, definitely my sister uh, <laughs> deserves all the credit for this. So. You know, I, I was uh, not quite sure how this was going to work. I mean, I, you know, we've never done anything like this before. Um, the idea was essentially to stay connected in one form or another. And I, 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 you know, I saw a lot of our customers, you know, sending us emails and, and uh, it, in lots of pictures of, you know, opening awesome bottles of wine on the weekends and cooking great, wonderful things. And, uh, th there's still a sense of, uh, of celebration, you know, to be with family and all of that. And so we thought, well, what if we reciprocated that a little bit and, and built a show uh, where we could meet at the same time every week and talk about, you know, all the good things in the world, and, and wine is certainly one of them. And uh, I never anticipated it was going to be so explosive <laughs> As it, as a, in it, and now here we are in our third episode, and uh, we're we're nearly maxing out the concurrent, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, connections that that we can we can host on the stream. And I have to say thanks to LifeSize for for sponsoring it, but it's been um, it's been a total success, and and it's really changed the dynamic of how we can communicate with our customers and and really have a direct connection with them because if, as you know it's, it's a bit of a two-way uh, experience right they have the ability to, to chat in in concert during the stream and then we kind of stay engaged with them and they're they're sending photos on Twitter and it, it, it's just it's a lot of fun so there's a lot of uh, competition for attention on the internet and and while consumption of, of things to maybe take our minds away from everything happening in the world, uh, is is uh, at an all-time high. And many of us are looking for you know these small, brief moments uh, to escape. Um, you're also competing with you know the video streaming services and any number of other places where people can consume content. What is it about the wine stream that you think brings your audience back and keeps them engaged? Is it something uh, about the content itself? Do you think it's something about uh, what you're able to offer them that's not as easily uh, replicated on? maybe a, a more mainstream consumer uh, video uh, service? Yeah, you know, I, I, you know I, I don't really know what that formula is. I at least couldn't potentially verbalize it. Uh, it's, it's, I, I think it has a lot to do with the same reasons why uh, kind of the, the happy hour is, is such an important part of our day, you know. 
Um, I, I think a lot of our customers, you know, who have been coming to the winery over the years remember, you know, these, these really, you know, fun, interesting tidbits and the wine stream gives us an opportunity to dive into subjects that we don't maybe have the time to do with the customer when they're, you know, here for only a couple hours. Um, and so it's, it's in a kind of an expanded format on, on, or at least we try to make it an expanded format on subjects that I, we believe they're interested in. Yeah, well, I'm going to switch gears a little bit. And, um, you know, you've got these incredibly innovative marketing programs that are helping you, you know, continue to have this connection, um, or at least replicate some of the reasons why people come to the winery um, when, when they're able to. Um, as a leader, as somebody that's faced with making these choices that impact your team and how they spend their time and, and as well you know, have impact on the business, um, what are you personally taking away from the, the past several weeks of this experience? Any, anything that um, you know, you've noticed that has been useful for you and your communication with your team internally or that you think is replicable for other organizations that are experiencing similar challenges to yours? I think I think some some of these tools that we have that we almost take for granted. You know, um, um, you know, many of these businesses. I mean, we're fortunate here at the winery to have you know twin ten gigabit fiber connections, and we have all this bandwidth. You know, um, the ability to stream HD video and uh, and have multi point you know communications and host guests in and share con you know dynamic content. And do it without a production crew, and with you know, these are these are tools that just frankly weren't available ten years ago. And so, um, I think that you know, through these challenging moments, and uh, it, it's it, there's a lot of there's more opportunities than ever for companies to, uh, to to do innovative things with the tools they have at their fingertips. Yeah, that's a great lesson, I think, for anybody that's experiencing disruption in their business is to, you know, really reevaluate the tools at your disposal and see if there's new creative ways to apply them. Um, well, Christian, we'll get you out of here, but before we do, I have to ask, um, for folks that are wine enthusiasts that would typically be at your winery and, and maybe sharing a, a good, their favorite vintage with a friend and, and their families right now, and, they other, and because of the current climate are not able to, um, how can they support uh, the industry at large? What are, what are the proactive things that consumers can do to support their local wineries or some of their favorite brands across the country? You know, it, it, we've been very fortunate that the California government, as you know, it, it, when they went and they, they determined, you know, what are essential, non-essential functions, uh, they allowed wineries to be able to fulfill orders. In other words, do logistics, ship orders out and that was extremely important for giving the winery the wine industry a chance right to, to be able to maintain i mean it, it may it may pale in comparison to their typical sales structures driven through say tasting room sales but it allows us to uh continue to fulfill our very important uh, uh club members um who who rely on on their uh on their and their annual shipments uh, but also it allows people to place orders. And, and I think one of the best ways you can, you can support, uh, you know, your favorite uh, wine brand in, in Napa Valley is to place orders. And, uh, and it's also probably the safest way to, con to reliably receive the product and, and, and safely consume it because it's coming right to your door, right? And so you, you don't have to go out and, uh, and uh, it, it, you know, potentially expose yourself uh, in the community environment, but, but, you know, it, it's, it's not just that it's, it's all outlets. And I, so I think, you know, consuming the wines, uh, you know, con enjoying them. And, uh, I think all of that helps the wine industry. Well, that, it sounds like about the easiest advice to follow is to consume <laughs> a little more wine right now. Christian, thank you so much for the time today. And, and, and on behalf of everyone at Life Size, we hope you and your team, uh, stay safe and stay healthy, and we look forward to talking with you again soon.